You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. <laughs> Nationalist News. Highlights of the news today, the 2nd of March. African witchcraft alive and well in our capital city. Operation Black Boat vetoes footballer for comedy style advert in Spain. Euro News with Nick Griffin commenting on Iran and more. Protests are no threat to me, says Vladimir Putin. Pressure on Syria from China and Russia. Thought for the day, killer schoolgirls. UK News. African witchcraft is being practised in East London. A boy of 15 was murdered by a couple named as Magali Bamu and her partner Eric Bikubu. This witchcraft, which is a mixture of African black magic and evangelical Christian beliefs, has been practised widely by immigrants from the Congo and other parts of Africa for 12 years or more. On Friday, three adults were found guilty of the torture of an eight-year-old girl in Hackney who had been accused of witchcraft. Amongst the cures for this affliction is now a severe beating and having chilli peppers rubbed in one's eyes. She is now ten and survived, but many others have been killed and disposed of. Community workers blame our authorities for ignorance and lack of resources. One African was tied up and burnt by cigarettes and bludgeoned to death by a bike chain to release the evil spirits inside her by her auntie and boyfriend, who believed the girl also to be possessed by demons. Simon Woolley and Operation Black Boat have slammed Liverpool Football Club goalkeeper Pepe Reina after appearing in a comedy-style insurance advert which was aired in Spain. The club, which has come under fire over the argument of racist remarks with the Luis Suarez incident on the pitch, is still under attack by the ridiculous politically correct attack squad. Supporters of Liverpool Football Club have commented, Where is Operation White Boat? Euro News with Nick Griffin Nick Griffin writes that he's sending this dispatch from the belly of the beast in a tearing hurry. The time I'd allocated to write it, Nick tells us, has been swallowed up by a very good cause. I found at the last minute that I could get a slot filming in the parliamentary Voxbox TV recording facility. One of my European colleagues had booked it, but then couldn't make it. So I took the opportunity to record a short piece about the looming threat of war in the Middle East and what lies behind all the sabre rattling over Syria and Iran. Since the adventures of Master William Haig are forcing up the cost of our motoring every single day, I think it's really important that people understand what's really going on and why. The first step is making an effective argument for peace is to understand why there is so much risk of our being dragged into conflicts that have nothing to do with us. The piece I recorded won't be going out for a couple of days, and the message is so important that I want to let you hear it now. So here it is. Behind the rational, liberal arguments of some of the Syrian rebels' westernised spokesmen lie much more sinister forces. Most obviously, they are the Muslim fundamentalists. You've only got to listen to any of the footage of rebel protests to hear that they are dominated by one slogan, Allah o Akbar, God is great. The uprising in Syria is not a push for western-style democracy. It's an attempt by radical Sunni Islam to take over yet another country just as, in the long term, they also aim to take over the West. Less obvious, there's the fact that the so-called Syrian revolution, far from being a natural homegrown response to tyranny, is in reality imported. Just like the Arab Spring, the phony coloured revolutions in Eastern European countries like Ukraine and the protests in Russia, the unrest is cynically and ruthlessly planned, incited and funded by a sinister network working to impose a new world order on the whole of mankind. To these globalist fanatics, independent, sovereign nations are a stumbling block to their ambition to build a single world economy and government, in which global corporations and international finance are free to privatise, loot and exploit for the biggest possible profit in the fastest possible time. They don't care how many civil wars they create, or how many of our soldiers they get killed in conflicts that have nothing to do with us. That's why, right now, They are beating the drums of war against Iran, threatening to send the Middle East up in flames and our fuel prices through the roof just in order to get control of the oil, cover up the collapse of their debt-ridden banking system and to ensure that the Zionist expansionists, who have so much influence in Israel, are able to carry on building their illegal settlement and stealing Palestinian land. The threat of war for oil and Israel is very, very real. I spoke out about it recently in the European Parliament. Here's what I had to say. 
I know that huge numbers of ordinary people in Britain, the USA and all over Europe agree with me when I say we should keep out of foreign wars that are none of our business. But sadly, the out-of-touch political elites in our nations don't care what you or I think or want. That's why the resistance to their warmongering and the resistance to their creeping one-world tyranny of corporate fascism has to be mobilised by us from the grassroots. The first step is to spread the word about what is really going on. That's why the globalists are so desperate to get control of the internet and to censor the life out of it. Fortunately, they haven't yet succeeded. So use the time left wisely. Surf the net, study these things, and spread the word. All that is needed for evil to triumph is that good men do nothing. Those New World Order plans are evil. So do something to stop them today. World News Protests against President Vladimir Putin are no threat at all, says the Russian Premier. He told reporters from around the world that the protesters' numbers actually made him happy because of the difference in the larger numbers of voters who support him. Mr Putin will be running as President of Russia once again and he's expecting a comfortable win. Sources say that the Russian election system is by far much better than the election system in Britain, where, for example, Labour postal voters in London had more than 20 voters who were foreigners living at the same address. China and Russia have been putting pressure on Syria, reports have said. The rebels who are fighting Syrian government forces have retreated in the last 24 hours during bitter confrontations. The move by Russia and China on Syria is to allow the humanitarian chief of the United Nations access to the war-torn country. Bab Amar, which is a district inside Homs, has been under intense fighting for the last few weeks with high death tolls. Thought for the day. Well, after all the many years of trial and tribulations on the death of Stephen Lawrence, which has been milked until even black liberals are sick to death of it, we have another epidemic in our capital city. What is it? It is crime amongst the mainly black population, which has grown considerably during the last few years, from the quiet and well-behaved West Indian immigrants to black Africans who have been allowed into this country. Why, I cannot think. The British were amongst many of the European colonists who gave Africa more than it took out, and yet we, in this small country, seem to allow or rather not stop these people coming in. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, and this fare is not good. Firstly, we have the boom in births from this section of society, the enormous strain it puts on our NHS and later education. And on the subject of education, how about the schoolgirl, Victorio Osatico, who aged 18 was behind arming a 20-strong gang and hacked a 15-year-old boy to death in an underground station? What does this jury do? Even faced with indisputable evidence, they were unable to reach a verdict on the charge of murder. Are these people drawn from the same gene pool, or are they stupid? If this girl had been white, she would have been hung from the yardarm. The parents of the boy, Sofien Bellamudin, are naturally somewhat disappointed, and my thoughts go out to his family at this time. Very little is reported in the papers on Sofia and his life, but nearly a page is devoted to this evil and nasty creature, going into her bad start in life. Well, I would rather she had had a better start in life in another country, not in my country. We then have various ailments back in this country which were exterminated, namely TB and even leprosy. To say nothing of the HIV-ridden people we not only allow in this country, but even give them life-saving medicines at great expense to our NHS. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, our NHS is struggling to survive, not because of our people, or even to fund our cancer patients and elderly and disabled, but a host of parasites who see this country as some sort of free house, and when questioned will undoubtedly come back with the old, well-worn phrases of slavery and colonialism. They do not have slavery or colonialism now, do they? And we have an added evil they have brought into our shores, witchcraft, another thing that was stopped many years ago. It is alive and well in London, where there is a greater preponderance of black immigrants as last summer's riots show. Lovely. Who was for a bit of voodoo, then? Most of the known cases involve small children, and Detective Superintendent Chris Burley, head of the Metropolitan Child Abuse Command, said such cases were difficult to police. These are very small churches. Sometimes they meet in small halls, sometimes in people's houses. Well, they wanted their freedom, and they got it. So why the hell do they keep coming over here and costing the taxpayers huge amounts of money for medical expenses, legal fees and prison sentences. If not wanting to see my country go downhill fast, and wanting something more for our people is being racist, then I am and I'm proud of it. I prefer tribalist, 
as whether you like it or not, everyone is tribal, even nowadays, and sometimes I do not like people of my own tribe, so there. Please keep your comments coming in. They keep me on my feet and are very welcome, even the not so complimentary ones. And finally, the Argentine Prime Minister, who ran crying to the United Nations over the sovereignty of the Falkland Islands recently, now suddenly wants to set up weekly flights from the Argentine capital, Buenos Aires, to the islands. The Falkland Islands government has stated that there will be no way that this will happen. Some say she has plans up her slippery Argentinian sleeve and no one trusts her. Once a week a Chilean-based commercial flight does an all-round trip to the Falklands and Argentina across Argentinian airspace. The Argentine president has said it is likely to stop this service. The British Foreign Office has retaliated, saying if Argentina is happy to promote flights to the Falkland Islands, it should reconsider its ban on flights through its airspace. A small thought for us to think about regarding Argentina. We pay a portion of monies to aid the Argies through the EU. Exactly 7 million euros from 2007 to 2013. The total EU package is 65 million euros for the same time period. Plus, we are contributing through the IMF support for Argentinian schemes, which have seen Buenos Aires receive 450 million pounds over the last 12 years. Are we completely mad? You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and we wish you from the team at Radio Britain a happy and safe weekend.